Welcome back, everybody. Normally, I like to give a little bit of time, a little bit of time, like 24 hours would be nice to let the previous video breathe a little bit. But unfortunately, uh, the progress, it moves faster than I can edit, publish and get it out. So that's just the way it goes. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the V3 version of the photo pack. So it will be appearing up on the normal place. Um, just to give you a rough overview of the new features, V3 includes Flux Shift Line, which is the same as Flux Shift, but does not use Easy Use. I know that a lot of people were having trouble with Easy Use, and I think it might be a conflict with other nodes that are out there that people use, which I don't have. And so to eliminate that, I've just brought out a non-Easy Use version of Flux Shift, which was the main the new main workflow released in V2. All right, so you've got, you've got the choice now. Um, the new workflow today is auto shift. If you've seen my previous colors and SDX cell workflows, you'll know that we have like a prompt enhancer thing, uh, but that's been built into this. There's also, of course, uh, a no easy use version as well, which is basically auto shift line. And when I say line, I'll show you what I mean, but it means it's only connected with the lines. You know, it's not um, it's not using references like the current master workflow. All right. So we'll take a quick look at the uh, the, the, the bit, you know, look, see this tangled mess, tangled mess. It's fun. Lots of fun. But yeah, basically this one here is the shift. So as you can see, it's just got a text box going into the encoder. All right. Um, other than that, it's exactly the same as the previous model. I think I got rid of the alternate sampler just for the sake of, because look how much their wiring there was. It, it's easy for you to, uh, you know, copy and paste that here, but you'll have to reconnect everything. That's the best thing about the references, you know, they're much more portable and uh, modular. But anyway, to save people the uh, effort, pulling their hair out, trying to get easy use to work, I've just made a version that doesn't use it. Now, if we take a look at the auto shift version, it is, ah, that's the actual auto shift. So I want auto shift lines before we jump into this. All right, so there we go. Auto shift lines has the auto shift, the auto prompt section, and it uses model shift, but it is just lines. There's no easy use. I had a couple of comments from people that were really struggling with that. Um, and so here is the non-easy use version for you guys, okay? I'm sure you could probably get it working if you struggled a bit, but I'd like to eliminate the struggle. That's what I'm here for. And it's no big deal to go back to the old way of just connecting everything up. So, okay, right. So let's get into the new workflow, which is this one. Now, we can have a lot of fun with this. So let's just go full screen and dive into it. I think I might be, uh, yeah, that, okay, right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to activate the prompt and I'm just going to let it run. It's on random seed. So we're going to see the changes populating in the bottom left corner of the screen throughout the entire video. Right. So first of all, let's just explain while it chugs away what we're actually doing with this. So if I start here, you'll notice that the clip text encode for Flux has a clip L and it has a T5XXL. The guidance is 3.5 and the model shift is currently two. We're using image to image with 0.4 denoise. Now, something I've noticed is if I have a model shift of, let's say, 0.5, uh, no, not 0.05, although zero is a fact of actually the default. I thought it was 1.15. It's not, it's zero. So in fact, let's just go to zero, right? So we'll go to zero and then we'll go to 0.9. And you're going to see something interesting. The convergence point for the balance of the image to image is going to move. So right now we're using shift zero. So if I go down to 0 0.75, which is the normal image to image threshold, right? So right now that's the prompt. The prompt is robot samurai thingy, right? But the image is sort of um, Prince of Persia, I guess. I don't know. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to lower the denoise. You've obviously used denoise before, right? We lower the denoise to give the uh, image underneath more influence, right? But the difference here is we can now start increasing the shift 
so that we can get away with lower and lower and lower. Normally, if you had a denoise so low, all you're going to get is the original image, right? So, for example, it's going to be doing a different seed every time, by the way. But it's not changing the seed for the prompts. So the prompt should stay the same. Let me just make sure we've got that right. Fixed and fixed. Yeah, fixed and fixed. Okay. So all that's changing is the seed. And then we're making our changes to the uh, denoise float and to the uh, model sampling flux. So the shift float. All right. And then you can see those changes coming in. So this is what we'll get from a random roll when we try to generate an image. Um, we'll go over the prompt in just a second. Okay. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, uh, because this is the image, this is the image, which has got the greatest influence. I'm going to boost the model shift, right? And what you're going to see is that the prompt is going to come back into play again. And what we're doing is we're playing this balancing act, seeing how low we can go with the denoise so that we still have the image that we wanted to see. And then how high we can go with the flux shift to see if we can get uh, interesting restyling. Okay. So obviously it's making a sort of futuristic uh, thing. So here we go. We're going to go down again. We're going to go down to 0.5 now. So normally at this point, you would mostly be seeing the original image. All right. So let's wait for the next one. There we go, right? So it is starting to become less sci-fi and more fantasy. This is why I picked a sort of fantasy image and a sci-fi prompt. So now what we'll do is we'll go up on the model flux. Now, you could never do this before with image to image, and this is essentially what ControlNet was doing. I mean, if we do a little bit of, well, I don't want to do spoilers. That's the next workflow. <laughs> I try to plan ahead, guys. So we're sort of going up a staircase here. If control net shows up, awesome. If IP adapter shows up, even better. But we're not going to need it for most things. It's just going to make life much, much easier uh, if we do get it. So, you know, pray for more stuff. <laughs> so right now we've sort of gone back to the original prompt, but there is still a heavy modern influence in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down even farther to 0.4. And after it's made this one, it's probably going to go back to a little bit more fantasy-ish. Yeah, so it's sort of still got some tech there, though. So I reckon I could probably go down to 0 0.3 even, which is very low. Normally, you would be barely touching it. And in fact, last night, I had this working at 0 0.2. So it's uh, effectively like hyper strength, but really low denoise. Um, okay, so now we're at point three. It's still making it's it's kind of going back to fantasy, but you can see the star, you can see the um, you know, the sci-fi influences still, right? Ah, there we go. Look at that. It's C. Oh, that's really cool. Very sci-fi. So let's just go down even further. And like I said, model shift doesn't have to be three. That's quite strong. So now we're back, we're down to, it's still got a bit of tech in there. Look, you can still see a bit of tech, but it's very much like the original now. So what I'm going to do is start increasing the model shift and I'll go too far to show you. because It's quite subtle, but as we now increase the model shift, it will, oh, look at that. And I've even got it says sign Johnson in the uh, prompt. So every now and then you get a really good, get really good lettering on the clothing and stuff, which is nice. So there we go. Right. I reckon we could pump it up to three. I've gone as high as four, but I wouldn't normally go that high. But obviously if I'm like doing this, look, 0 0.2 denoise. Now, obviously if we have a high denoise with a high shift, it's going to make a completely different image than the, uh, you know, it won't follow the input basically. Wow, look at that. Random demons. I love it. Okay. So that's that one there. So let's just go for 3.5. Now, I'm the reason it's wandering all over the place is I'm not specifying a race or a gender or any kind of information about the person. It's as generalized as it can be. Right. See what happened when I put it up too far? Now it's, 
making crazy robot stuff, which is just completely wild. So um, again, what we could do is we could now <laughs> we could now turn it down again to 0 0.1. Now I haven't been this low, so this is going to be interesting. So we'll go for 0 0.1 denoise. It's still making really nice character art, uh, concept art. So now we're back to the original guy again. Look, see. Right. So now what we'll do, push it for model shift four. So, wow, look at that. It's like some kind of Star Wars character art. Okay. Oh, yeah, look at that, Johnson. So I like this stamping thing because you can kind of, you know, it doesn't work 100% of the time, all right, but uh, there's other ways we can solve that. But um, it's quite nice to be able to, like, hide your you know your name in the artwork kind of thing so um, i might be looking into that kind of thing but yeah you can see here it's just completely lost the plot this is what it used to do when you were trying to do image to image and it wasn't you know this is why we need control net basically uh but again i've blown this out if i take it down to three it's going to go back to following the prompt again and we're going to get some more realistic whoa that's creepy she's got like a, a weird arm I like how it's got my name on the voice box. That's cool. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to take it back up. I found that 0.35 to 0.4 was nicest. And then usually a model shift of 2 or 1.5, I think, kept that under control. We'll just see what happens here. No, that's way too high. Yeah, that's way too high. So I would have to go for model shift 1 maybe. Oh, crap. I was delayed. So actually it was 2. I was right. I think it probably depends on what the subject is. Um, let's go to 3.3 three with model shift 2. Okay, cool. So what it's done there is it's basically done what I asked it to. So now let's show you what's going on here beyond. I didn't show you. This is the whole point, and this is the last section of the video. So... I like try to keep these short where I can, guys. So basically what you've got here is the actual show text. So this is the prompt which is actually being finished. That's what you're, that's what's actually being sent into the generation. And what we're doing is we're sending the prompt G to T5XXL and the prompt L to clip L. Now, obviously L to L will match. G to G should be okay, but it could be better. And so the way I've tried to make it better is by front loading the enhancer. Okay. So the enhancer does try to contextually take what you've said to generate the rest. So it's going to try and put in things. And obviously you get a lot of uh, little options here. So, you know, uh, you've got artist, right? So obviously we've got a, a bunch of different artist styles that you can pick from, or if you prefer none. We've also got image types, okay? So let's say I'm just going to pick photograph now. So no artists, photograph, right? Subject all. Now I could change this to be human uh, fictional, I think it is. Is that going to be human fictional? Is there another one? Landscape concept. Yeah, it is. It's going to be, uh, oh, well, I could say humanoids, I guess. Yeah, we'll do fictional. Fictional human. And what I've done is I've set, taken the prompt prefix and fed it this, which is my actual prompt. It's got the, the, the text that I want it to have in the image. And then it's got the actual prompt, which I was trying to generate with. And then what I've done is I've also added in a custom subject. All right. And the custom subject is this, another prompt. So I'm mixing two prompts together, one for style, really, and then the other one for subject. But there is a bit of style in there, right? Mixing it up and all. Uh, the one button prompt does have a seed generation, so it's set to fixed. So unless I change it, it will be the same. But it means that if I want to just make a variation of what I've got, I can just go click. And then it's going to make a variation on that prompt. Just wait for it to actually make it because I think we're there. We go. See the back end all changed, right? But it also means that you can easily dr drag these back up again. 
Uh, right, what else is there? Ah, yeah, and then the magic prompt. What we're doing here is we're embellishing the middle section with magic prompt, and that has its own fixed seed also, which is, like I said, I've kept them separate, so you can change this part, or you can change uh, uh, the part that comes after it, which is this part, okay? Now, I know that might sound complicated, but what it means is I could type in, for example... Uh, let's just get rid of everything after Gundam, like that, okay, and then in this one, let's get rid of, um, I don't know, actually, they're fine, I like them, but we'll change the thing, so then it's going to change it. You've also got the insanity level, right? Uh, and if you want to download the extra model, there is a super prompt model that will also do even more work for you. I don't have it turned on because I don't find I need it. Um, with the humanoids, we can force female genders, I think. Let's try and see if that works. Oh, God, she's got... <laughs> what the hell? Oh, it's a face mask, but it looked like a Chad beard. Okay. All right. And as I was saying, um, this is the interesting part, right? So if I just suddenly go, ah, oh, I'm bored of this image now. I want to do this one instead. Now it's going to go, go ahead and it's going to use the same prompt, same seed, same everything. But we might have to adjust the denoise and flux to get it nice. But usually once you've found a nice, a nice spot, it actually tends to sit there. So now we're going to get this sort of... <laughs> sort of futuristic take on the um, medicine mask or whatever. Oh, wow, that one's really cool. All right. Okay. Uh, what else can we do? Ah, yeah, that's right. So how about we bring the denoise down a bit and then pump up the sampling flux? Okay. Usually it takes two images, I think, to catch up with us. But I'm kind of liking this constant stream of images. Let me know in the description, in the comments below, if you prefer this sort of instant version where we just keep getting outputs. It's quite appropriate for the testing we're doing. So, you know, if uh, you've enjoyed the constant slideshow of images today, then uh, do let me know and then I'll keep doing it. All right. So let's just go to the next image. What happens if we want to do a landscape image? Well. It's going to do the standard thing, which image to image does. It's probably going to make like a head in the clouds or a robot in the clouds. That'll do. I, I like the turf he's got on his shoulders. Imagine that. You live in a, in a giant Gundam. Okay, so now it's making some cool sort of mobile armor, mobile fortress type stuff. Another giant mech. Now, what I want to do is maybe change it into sci-fi landscape and then all oh that's super cool and um uh, if it's ever like a bit fuzzy i'm not really too bothered about that because often color correction will solve it and even if color correction wasn't enough you can always use this as the image to image and then make a more appropriate prop prompt because right now we're kind of doing a prompt mix or prompt prompt merging uh, transformation. So it's going to make some cool stuff. I mean, look at that. That's super cool. I love it. See, this thing's got the really good coherency. So, you know, um, is there a way I could just type in something here? Let me just see. Artist. Artist. Yeah, let's just go straight to horror and uh, see. Wow. That's so cool. It's like a skeleton robot bin with trees growing off his shoulder. I love it. Oh, it's just too good. Is that a cannon with like spider legs coming out of the building's mouth? Man. So anyway, like I said, these these still we still I don't think found the perfect settings, um, but this is looking really nice. Um, I think one thing I could do right now is just show you if I just go up to like 49 or 45 denoise, but then bring this down to one 
or even 0.5. And then I'll show you that it can do other things with, you know, you, we can do other things, basically. Same sort of thing, but. Oh, all right. Now we're back to the house look, see? So now I got two options. If it looks too much like the original image, you've got two choices. You can either up the flux, which will make it more like the prompt, or you can reduce the denoise, which will make it more like the uh, image that you're using, right? And you can go, as I said, all the way down to point 0.1 now, which was something we never really could do properly. So this is huge. Um, uh, like I said, maybe I want it to be more like the original now, so I'll lower the denoise. And then maybe I want it to be more like the prompt. So this is like have your cake and eat it later, because normally you had to choose which one. Now you can have both. And I, that's such a huge thing. So this is an amazing uh, debut outing. I can see why a lot of people are just getting set up for Flux Dev now. Um, wow, look at that. Okay. And then obviously we can just increase, well, increase the shift. And look, we're still getting, this is true to the original image, but it's actually higher quality than the original image. Much more coherent. It's just better in every way. It's the same concept, but it's just better in every way. Um, and we haven't even looked at high res fix yet. That all comes later. So we're still building up basic functionality right now. But I know I probably did this in the last video a little bit, but I really wanted to stress, look at how powerful this can be, you know? And to be honest, I've been running on the same prompt the whole time. So like, for example, if I was to change a couple of, points here, change a couple of points here. We're now going to get a completely uh, different prompt. There it is. It's completely changed. So you'll notice it's got stuff like Octane Render, ZBrush, you know. Obviously, if you want to have full control over your prompts, that's cool. But you might learn a few tokens you've never seen uh, that maybe you start including in your prompts. So, so partly it's exploration as much as anything else. A lot of these tools were built on thousands and thousands of lines of prompts that other people have already found to be good. So that's the whole point of community participation. Right. So let's just pump this up to three now as we come to the end. Like that. Pump it up. Pump it up. And we should just get some kind of giant robot. Ooh. Very armored core. Kawaii Desu. Okay. Ooh, nice. Very nice. So that's basically everything I've got for you today. Um, obviously, this is the exact same as the last workflow. Uh, you've got your alternate sampler here, and then you've got your upscalers down here. Just in case you didn't see that video, I would recommend going back and watching the videos in the series because they do explain everything, and I can't explain it all every time. But very simply, if you disable the main render area and then go enable stage one what we can do is we can take this image and we can shove it in there and then we can cue turn off yeah let's just turn off auto cue okay so now we've got our upscale of that mecca all right so we've got a big old gun coming out that's pretty cool actually i really like that um and then obviously as i've explained in the past Put a different image with a more vibrant color palette. Obviously, different images will give you different looks. And this is upscale color correction, but it's not really a lookup table. It's just image image style, it's, but it works. OK, and you can get a more stylized version of the image just by using, uh, you know, just I just keep them handy. You know, whenever I get a funky image like this, I put it to one side to see how it looks. And obviously, if you can go from that upscale output to something like that upscale output with zero effort, well, it's a nice little trick to have. So there it is. And uh, please do join us in the Discord. I try to help people out when they're having trouble. Uh, give us a like on the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And be sure to check out the Flux pack if you're enjoying Flux because there'll be more updates here. So that is me signing off for version three. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. So, 
Memberships are here. I've added donator and member. The donator membership is just a, you want to support the channel, help us grow. Member, you're going to get some exclusive video access. So look out for the upcoming date and uh, check out the join now button for more information.